logistic differential equations. Uh, this is just a type of differential equation. Um, it's uh, very specific. And in fact, you may have seen it in some other classes. So let's look at its general form first. So this is the general form, as far as the equation is concerned, of a differential, a logistic differential equation. dy over dt equals ky 1 minus y over l. Okay, k and l are just constants, and then y is your variable. t would also be a variable once you uh, solve for it, but um, t and y are your variables. k and l are just constants. Um, the graph will look something like this. Okay, and that's just a rough sketch. But it does have a horizontal asymptote at y equals l. Okay. Now the carrying capacity, not something we usually talk about with differential equations, but it is with this type, and that is L. So let, let's pause here and kind of consider what this means and what it looks like. I don't know if you've seen this type of graph before, but if you've ever talked in biology or ecology or anything about um, the population growth for a type of animal species, it usually follows this type of pattern. So, for example, let's say you introduce a predator into an e ecosystem where it hasn't been previously. It's going to grow pretty quickly, um, and that's because all of a sudden the, the food system has changed and it probably has an abundance of its prey. But at some point, the number is going to max out because the number of prey can only sustain so many predators. And that's why you see it, it grows very quickly but then it levels off and just kind of stays at a certain level because the ecosystem will only support it at a certain population level. Okay, so that population level where it maxes out is L. That's the carrying capacity. So you notice you can find that number right here under Y. One word of warning though, the this is the general form. It's not the exact form. And what I mean by that is the general form does have it KY times 1 minus. Um, but it doesn't have to be 1 minus. It can be 2 minus or 10 minus or 100 minus. And in that case, L isn't necessarily going to be what's below the Y. So what you really need to focus on is what number would you plug in for Y that would make the part in parentheses equal 0. So when it's written this way, it would just be L. Because then you'd have L over L, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. But we'll see in an example in just a minute that there are other ways or other types <laughs> sometimes you have to figure out what will make it zero sorry I'm not being real clear on that but it will be once you see an example so that's called the carrying capacity so there's a few things you need to know about these solving them is actually not one of the things you have to know you have to be a little creative uh, it's different from what we've done before to solve these so we're not going to worry about it but you need to know that the limit as you go to infinity oh by the way this graph I drew is actually y of t this is the original equation, not the differential equation. Um, so the, the equation you see, dy over dt, that's obviously the derivative. What I have drawn the graph of is the original. So if you do the limit as t approaches infinity of the original equation, it's just going to be L. It's your carrying capacity. It's what it maxes out at. And if you do the limit as t approaches negative infinity, well, hopefully you can just look at the graph and tell that that's going to be 0. Okay, the only other fact you need to know about this type is when it grows the fastest. Well, y of t grows fastest when y equals l over 2. This is also the point of inflection. So it's when L, Y equals L over 2. So notice, we usually deal with X values or T values, but in this case, we do have the Y value that it's given to us. So right when the population is half, its carrying capacity is when it's growing fastest. So that's when the growth rate is fastest. Okay, so let's do a couple examples. So given this equation right here, what is the carrying capacity? Okay, since this one is just of the form 1 minus y over 50, 
we can just look at the number under y. It's going to be 50. But again, notice it's also the number that if you plugged it in for y would make the part in parentheses equal to 0. Because you get 50 over 50, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, and then what's the limit as t approaches infinity? Well, that's going to be the carrying capacity. So it's just 50. And then at what value of y is y of t growing fastest? Well, we just said that it's going to grow fastest at half the carrying capacity. That's when it's growing fastest. The growth is going to start to steady off, steady a little bit and um, level off. That's what I was looking for once you hit the halfway point. Okay, given an elk population is modeled by dp over dt equals kp times 4,000 minus p over 2, what is the carrying capacity? So this is an example of what I was talking about. This is still logistic. I know it's not in the traditional form, but just think about there's different ways to write a linear equation. You know, there's a slope-intercept form, there's a point-slope form. Those are all linear equations. They're just written slightly differently. Same idea here. We could rewrite this in the more traditional format with the 1 minus by factoring 4,000 out, but uh, we're not going to bother doing that. This is still logistic. Okay, so the question is, what number would we plug in for p right here, standing for the population of elk, to make the part in parentheses equal to 0? Well, that would be 8,000, because 8,000 over 2 is 4,000, and then 4,000 minus 4,000 is 0. Then they ask for the limit as t approaches negative infinity. Well, that would be 0. And then at what value of p is the population growing the fastest? Or they could ask, where would the point of inflection be? And that would be at p equals 4,000, because that's half the carrying capacity. So if you know these facts about logistic, you should be golden as far as that's concerned.